Hello and welcome to Learning with Lovo. Today we are covering the topic of timelines and hostile BVR engagement. It will be a long one, so maybe pause the video, grab a cup of tea and settle in. BVR can be a divisive topic in DCS, in no small part due to the actual BVR tactics being a closely guarded secret in the real world. This is of course appropriate as the defense of this information protects the lives of those who would employ them, and they don't get respawns. I always try to present only what I can find credible sources for, and I want to acknowledge this video, by necessity, will deviate a little from that standard. This video consists of what little I could find in official documents, glued together with some of what I and those I fly with on DCS have found to be practical. Let's crack on. I'll cover some fundamental concepts, and I encourage those who haven't seen my low, no threat intercepts video to watch that first. I'll then look at an example engagement, then the practical variables, and finally, I'll stick some in-game examples at the end. Let's get started. BVR means beyond visual range, somewhere between 5 to 7 miles in real life depending on your eyesight, in-game similar or slightly further depending on your label settings. Unless you're flying BFM sets with close-in air spawns, you will be engaging or approaching a target through the BVR realm. As I describe the process, I'll assume you don't already know where the target is, but you do know it is hostile. If you do know where it is, you can simply ignore these steps. If you don't know it is hostile, then look at my previous video. Let's look at some key concepts. Launch Acceptability Range, or LAR. The modern, radar-equipped modules in DCS will compute how it expects your missile will perform if fired at that moment, as well as showing you where it calculates the limits of your selected weapon are. It will display these to you in a few ways, the most common being a DLZ, or Dynamic Launch Zone, shown in the hood. R Max. Using R for range, it will show you R Max, which is the range at which the weapon can reach the target at its current attitude, speed and altitude. However, the missile won't have the energy to deal with any maneuvers the target could make. The further inside of RMAX the target is, the more capability the missile will have in its terminal phase. RNE, or Range No Escape. This is the range where your jet thinks the missile has enough energy to reach the target with enough left over to deal with any evasive movers the target may make. Note, this doesn't make your missile undefeatable, just very, very strong. RMIN. This is the minimum effective range of the weapon. At ranges closer than this, the missile likely won't have time to arm its warhead. You should switch to a shorter range weapon to avoid a wasted shot. These ranges provide information for you on the projected effectiveness of the missile. It's entirely up to you when you fire. There are reasons you may want to fire a missile outside of R no escape or even R max. It can also act as a guide on what your target may be seeing range-wise. If you see the bandit is within your range no escape, and the bandit is very high aspect, then likely it sees you the same way. Your aspect. The way you fly in relation to your target can dramatically change your LARs as well as defeating the target's missile or radar. There are five modes I'll be referring to. Hot. This is when you're flying directly at the target. This will give your missile the most range and the fastest closure rate. Cranking. This is flying to one side of the target almost to the max gimbal of your radar. It reduces your downrange speed, which can slow down fast-paced events, as well as reducing yours and the bandit's LARs. If an R-Max missile was fired at you nose-on, cranking could be enough to defeat it by increasing the distance it has to fly to get to you. Notching. This is flying to place the bandit or a missile on your 3 or 9 o'clock. You won't be able to track the target on radar, but you will both force a missile to fly even further than cranking and make it difficult for the notched radar to find you. You can maintain this with the help of your RWR and SA page. Note that notching the bandit will not necessarily notch the missile. Pumping. This is the mirror of cranking. Flying cold into one side of the target. You lose some SA on the target as your radar will be gimbaled, but reduce any bandits and missiles closure velocity greatly. Cold. This is flying directly away from the bandit. If the target is defending, you can build range back up as well as forcing a long-range intercept for missiles. Though the missile can continue to fly straight, so it may not bleed as much speed as a notch or pump would. Remember to think in three dimensions. If you are cranking an incoming missile, you can descend in the crank to further increase the lead the missile has to take. This will also increase your speed and drag the missile into thicker air after its rocket motor is burnt out. 
both factors that are in your favour. Also, a notch can be performed vertically until you stall or hit the ground. Missile Timeout This is slightly different in active radar homing missiles or FOX 3s to semi-active radar homing missiles or FOX 1s. FOX 3 missiles take guidance data from the mothership until they are close enough to the target. Then they activate their own radars and guide themselves to impact. There would be a timer, usually in the hood, that counts down to active and then down to predicted impact. You would be able to gimbal your radar after a FOX 3 has gone active with no ill effect on the missile. A FOX 3 missile going active is known as going pitbull. A FOX 3 will look for a target either when it chooses to go active or when you lose lock on your target. This means if the missile is within 20 miles or so of the target, there is a chance it can still find and guide on it if you break lock. This works both ways, however. A FOX 1 needs to read your radar reflection off the target all the way to impact. You get a countdown to impact only. Also, I have found FOX 1s that have stopped guiding due to the mothership losing lock can begin guiding again if a lock is regained shortly after. Posturing Shot A posturing shot is a missile fired with the aim of pushing the target into a defensive posture. Less so purely with the aim of destroying the target. This requires the target to be aware they are being launched on. Unless you're in an aircraft that does not support track while scan, a competent bandit would be presuming they are being fired upon regardless of what their RWR says. This is because if you fire from a twizz lock, the target will only get nails on their RWR and an active missile warning when the missile goes pitbull. This is good for surprising them, but less so for posturing them. An STT lock fired FOX 3 will give them an RWR spike and the same active missile warning as TWIZ. If you fire in this manner and crank, the bandit is likely to presume there is an incoming missile. If you fire a FOX 1, which can only be fired from STT, they will immediately get a missile launch warning. The bandit will only have an approximate idea of the lethality of your missile shot, if they are aware of the missiles you could carry, as well as your altitude and speed. If they believe they are within your R max, they will have to defend to some degree or risk flying straight into your missile. Even a slow missile will kill you if you fly into it. The importance of this is that it prevents your target from being able to fly purely offensively towards you. The harder they defend, the more you swing the balance of tactical advantage in your favour. For example, a Hornet with AIM 120s flying against a Tomcat with Phoenixes has a disadvantage in aircraft and missile performance. The F-14 could be firing legitimately dangerous shots at 50 miles while the Hornet would have to close to fewer than 25 to 30 miles. If the Hornet fired outside R max at 40 to 45 miles, the shot would be very easy for the Tomcat to defeat. But unless the Tomcat pilot is foolhardy, they will still defend to some degree, which limits their ability to close in on you with range no escape shots while you are defending the first Phoenix. First sight, first shot, first kill. This is a concept popularized by the F-22 in its stealth capabilities. While we don't have stealth fighters in DCS, the concept holds true in building tactical advantage. If you find the bandit first, you can get a head start in advantageous positioning. If you shoot first, the bandit has to defend first. This means unless they can defend without gimbling their radar or their missile has gone active, their missile will likely go dumb when they defend, allowing you to fly directly at the bandit and set up an even more deadly shot for if or when they turn hot. Right, that's enough about all that. Let's get on to the meat and gravy. BVR Timelines a BVR timeline lays out ranges by which you should have completed certain tasks. This takes some of the guesswork out of the engagement and forces you to be cautious while building good habits, something which beginners commonly lack with both combatants flying straight into each other's missiles. It also highlights decision points, prompting you to analyse your situation and make better decisions. Following or understanding timelines will greatly increase your chance of surviving a BVR engagement. I want to point out here that there is no perfect timeline. It depends on your situation, as well as what you're facing and their situation. Let's take a look at an example timeline and then I have to talk about how it may change. The ranges you see here are NLT, or no later than ranges. Let's work through this timeline in a mock engagement. Bear in mind, at any point, if you need to, you should defend a known missile and can abort and run at any point too. Should the bandit turn away more than 120 degrees aspect, you can go hot to close the gap and get into our no escape range. But only if you're confident that they haven't launched a missile you'll then be flying into. Here we go. You're beyond 50 miles and are vectored onto a bandit. You turn hot and begin scanning. 
You find the target and commit to an intercept. You and your flight keep scanning the area to look out for other threats. You are focused on the target as your flight may lose it as they sanitize the area. You call target ranges and bandit maneuvers to your flight to maintain their SA. At 30 miles, you call MELD. This instructs your flight to stop scanning around and focus on the target. By 25 miles, you and your flight fire FOX-3 missiles and crank to the safest side. This slows your closure rate as things will happen quickly from here. You have the next 5 miles to assess the engagement and choose one of two options. You can continue, employ follow-up shots and press to within visual range, or wait for your missile to time out and turn cold. These are referred to as Banzai and Skate, respectively. Your choice here will depend on many factors and if in doubt, Skate. Positive signs would be if your target's aspect has decreased significantly, indicating they are defending, they have dropped off your RWR without being in your RWR blind spots, and if you are on timeline. Negative signs would be if you know you have a missile inbound on you or are spiked with a high aspect target. Bear in mind, a target that has track while scan capability may only appear as nails on your RWR while still being able to launch on you. Other negative signs are if you are not on timeline. Let's first assume you have chosen Banzai and come back to skate in a moment. You're cranking, awaiting your missile going pitbull. If you have time and missiles to spare, you may choose to launch again. At 10 miles out, we reach our next NLT timeline point. Defend. This is to deal with any missiles you may not be aware of. You defend even if you have no launch warnings. You take note of the bearing and altitude of the bandit and then turn to notch the target and dump some countermeasures. You will lose lock, so set up your radar to immediately pick up the bandit once you turn in again. You have three options for when to turn in. Were you spiked? No. Turn in as soon as you like. Yes. Has the spike dropped? Yes. Turn in. No. Turn in after 10 seconds. Remember, you can turn cold at any point, get some distance and restart the timeline from that range. I mention this because closing beyond 10 to 12 miles or fewer is very dangerous territory. At this range, an AMRAM will be within Arno Escape and immediately or quickly go active. This means the bandit could kill you even after you've killed them, even if you turn cold as soon as you fire. If you feel you have the advantage here, perhaps the bandit is still in the process of turning hot after defending, launch and pump. Offload AOA and get fast. Watch the bandit for if it launches on you, you kill it or it turns cold to defend. If it turns cold, you can go pure to set up another shot should it defeat your last missile. Or you can continue cold, get more range and then safely re-engage. The final point of the timeline is merge, which is to close completely with the bandit and go into your best BFM. You better hope your BFM game is better than theirs and that you know how to fight to your jet's advantages. If you still have medium range missiles, you should avoid this, get to range and use them. As I've pointed out, getting this close to a bandit is very dangerous as they could still have a medium range missile remaining or get lucky with a high aspect gunshot at the merge. Should you go for this? Look to my previous video on low no threat intercepts for how to set up an offset with the aim of taking as much of a lead turn into the merge as possible. We don't want a fair fight. Let's get back to the skate option now. You fired your missile and cranked. You don't feel like it's safe to go Banzai. So you wait for your missiles to go fully or nearly pitbull if they're Fox 3s or completely time out if they're Fox 1s. You turn away and fly away from the target. Now you have to weigh up your options. The bandit should be delayed by having to defend from your missile. So the range should be increasing. Do you want to leave the fight? Unload the AOA on the jet and get fast. Call for help if you have it. Do you want to keep the bandit at arm's length? Maybe you have better BVR weapons. Maybe they're faster than you and you can't escape anyway. At any point, you can turn hot and rejoin the timeline at the range you find yourself. Let's take a brief look now at how a flight would go through the timeline. You would be in a loose tactical formation and crank in place. No nav turns needed. The flight lead would call the timeline points and turns as well as if you're Banzai or Skate. All flight members would call their launches as well as timeouts and RWR warnings and if they have to defend and therefore leave formation. When flight lead calls meld, if the bandit is actually a group, he can choose to sort by azimuth or range if they're too close together or altitude if they're stacked on top of each other. In an azimuth sort, the flight member selects the bandit opposite them in formation. In a range sort, lead takes the nearest, dash two the second nearest, etc. In an altitude sort, lead takes the highest, dash two second highest and so on. Typically, lead would take a twiz lock for situational awareness while the flight takes STT. Finally, let's look at how timelines change. 
The ranges scale around your expected R no escape and threats. Set up for an R no escape of 40 miles, you need to have already done the previous steps and you can skate earlier. Going against a bandit with significantly superior range, such as a Tomcat with Phoenixes or a high fast JF-17 with SD-10s, I add defensive steps prior to my launch. A 50 mile crank with a possible posturing shot and a 40 mile defend to negate a likely first shot from the bandit. I will also ensure I am descending in my crank and notch because as well as defeating the missile, at those ranges there's a good chance if I'm low and notching I can defeat their radar for a time. This will upset any of the bandits follow up missiles that haven't gone active and mess up their SA. I'll cover more specific missile defenses in a later video. If you have the advantage in energy or range, you may wish to add a supersonic high Twiz Fox 3 beyond your R no escape or even R max. These have been shown to be effective due to the high speed the missile can maintain at its very high loft altitude, leaving very little reaction time for the bandit once the missile goes active, providing it hasn't significantly maneuvered since you fired it. Also, if you have these advantages, you can try and keep the engagement beyond the bandit's range but within yours, by skating, getting beyond the bandit's range, then re-engaging. Though with a reduced maneuverability in the high thin air, your first crank should bring you lower, and therefore reduce your range. There we have it, BVR timelines. Stick around if you want to see some in-game examples. Let me know what you thought in the comments and share this video if you think anyone may make use of it. Thanks for watching, learning with Lova. Nice. Okay, here we go. Let's get set up, bypass on, HMD on, no fuel tanks. Uh, Edo air mode, nine X's, HSD. Set out. And I don't need the bars yet either. There we go, we got him. Got him bugged. Don't know what it is yet. So we're repeating 30 Fox 3, 25 to side, um, and a 15 defend if I bonsai. This is hot on me, Angel's 19. He's a little bit above me. How fast I can take some altitude. Still fast, look at me. Taking it in height. Uh, can I get Miss TT? I can. Okay, he is cranking. Need that intercept. I'm not too worried about any missiles. He's fired up like that. I now I'm getting a little bit high. fired on me the way you was flying there so I'm going to skate and I got about eight seconds there's his missile Okay, shit. Yeah, that one's trash. 
That one's looking trash, that one's looking trash too. Let's give them a little turn, that should kill all their speed. Oh god. That one's definitely trashed. This one is slowly getting trashed. I'm running out of space. One, two. Is there a third? I guess not. Oh. Hi. Fuel tanks right now. Flight controlled. Flight controlled. Bring them up, and I want that. I'm gonna limit this bad boy as well. So once again, 50 mile posturing shot. Um, 40 mile defend and uh, aiming for a 30 mile Fox 3. This 50 miles, Fox 3, crank. Still hot on me. Manhattan burner. Even though it's probably going to scrub that missile, you got to do it because it's a fucking Tomcat with Phoenixes. And there's this notch. A little bit less. That's about right. Set up for the turn in. He is at 34,000. Turn in. Lock. Okay, he's cranking to my left, so I'm gonna go right. That's the safest side. Fox three, a little early. Never mind. Oh shit! I have to do this. Almost lost him on the radar. Definitely gonna escape. He's turning back in on me. Ten seconds. Okay, set up for the turn in. He's at thirty one thousand. Okay, it's probably enough time for him to defend, turn it in. STT, got him, he's cranking right, I'm going to around to the left, oh, I'm in LAR, I'm real fucking close, I'm definitely skating. One and zero. Okay, 
in 10 seconds, enough time for him to hear about it and then defend. Where are we at? 19,000. Manual. 19,000, turn it in. Here he is. Where are you? Oh, he's got right low. Put down. There he is. Look him up. Okay, 10 miles. This is bad, but he is uh, not hot on me. So let's give him one to think about. Take that. Okay, he's turning in now. He's turning hot. I have another one. And I'm getting the fuck out of there. blowing chaff that time. He is after me but he's got something to think about soon. Altitude. Not crash into the ground. Altitude. Damaged. Shit. He's 8,000. Destroyed. 